Hello everyone, Daniel's here. Let's continue right along. Let's copy the web six project and paste it as web seven. Then let's right click, go to properties, web, web project settings to change the deployment URL of the project to web seven. Click okay, okay. Now we're ready to continue working on the add passenger form. Let's go to controllers, add passenger. Last time we left, there we go. Not actually, we had this, we got all the information from the passenger, from the, we got all the information from the passenger form, all the parameters, we got all the request parameters, the first name, the last name, date of birth and the gender, and we saved it, those request parameters as variables. Let's continue. Let's uh, print some of that information. I'm going to print just the results. And then I want to add some form validation to make sure that what we got is not empty, that we didn't get empty or, in, or incorrect form values. So let's, let's check the first name. So I'm going to do if first name, we can do length equals zero. Well, then we can, well, in, in that case, we can see that the first name was submitted empty and that's wrong. So we can do system out print lane empty first name error. And then we can set an attribute on the request. Do set attribute. Later on, we, we are able to use the attributes that we set on the request in our JSP. So let's, let's first set those attributes and we'll see how we can use them later to display the error information. So here we set in an errors, an error true. Remember we can set attributes on the request. We've done it before, we've done it previously so that the request will hold information. In this case, it will hold true. This is a Boolean under the name errors. So if eventually I can do request, get attribute, and I'll ask for errors, well then the, what it will give me is the value, the Boolean value true. <laughs> but the, the attribute does not have to be a Boolean. It could be any Java object. Any Java object can be set as an attribute. And lastly, because we're setting this on the request object, the request is a short lived object, right? So a request lives when we go to the browser and we either, we go to the browser and we either sub go to this URL, we are making a request. And when we are submitting the form, we are making a request. But the next time when we, for example, go back here and go here again, that's already a second request. We submit the form again, that's a third request. So a request is one action by the browser. So if we set something on the request, this information is going to, is going to remain as in the attribute for one browser action for, and the next time we will go to another link or to an, click on another button and go to another link, um, the request will be a new request. And as a result, the attributes will at first be empty. Each request has its own attributes. 
this is opposed to a session. Now, a session lives lives um, lives uh, as long as, for example, as long as the browser is open, the session is live lives. So if we have a session object, then and set some attribute on the session object, then that what we set on the session object will remain as long as at least as long as we keep the browser open. And so we can go to multiple links and the, the, the attributes will remain there. But this is a request, so the attribute will only remain until we click on the next link in the browser. So here we clicked on one link to submit the form. The first name was empty, length zero, so we're adding an error attribute saying boolean true okay all right let's let's continue and i want to set another attribute uh first name error true very well okay let's continue and the next item to take care of is the is to check that we have the correct information in the date of birth. So I'm going to do a quick check here. You could check it more accurately, but I'm just going to quickly check it with a regular expression. Okay, so regular expressions are a big topic in their own right. So I'm going to put here regular expression that, that checks that the pattern of, of of the date of birth field matches matches more or less what we would expect for a date of birth field. So this is a little bit complicated, but this means that it will have one or two digits separated by forward slash. Then this will be the month. Another one or two digits that will be the day, and then four digits that will be the year. So this is the pattern that we want to check. The upper, this, this little thing here means this is the beginning of the string. The dollar means this is the end. The D would the D means number. The thing in the bracket means how many times the number repeats. So D one or two means either one number like five or a two digit number like 10 and two digit number like 10 here to either one digit or two digit for the day and here for the year we have four digits like 1986 1986 four digits and in between we have those forward slashes meaning that we separate by forward slash so this is tangential to the main to the i'm showing you how to do this but this is tangential to the main material of what we of the servlet this is this is java standard edition so i'm just kind of checking again checking this regular checking the date value against the regular expression then i want we have a pattern now i want a matcher matcher m uh, matcher m to take the pattern and to match match our date of birth row there we go and uh what i want is so i think i have to import the package java util regex regular expression and then there is a method in our matcher m.find that checks if uh, to check if the our, our date of birth pattern, our date of birth in the form matches this pattern. And if it is great, we have a match. If it is, I would actually go ahead and um, go ahead and put all this code for the date of birth. Let's go ahead and put all this code for the date of birth. So we have a pattern. We compile the pattern. We use the resulting pattern against the date of birth row that was provided by the form match or find is would 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 be true 
if the matcher finds this pattern in the what in what we submitted and if we find this pattern in what we submitted the, the date of birth that we submitted then continue and generate a data object else if the pattern was not found then we can print some error for now we can uh we can do uh system out print lane invalid date of birth and um, set on the request do request uh, set attribute errors uh, true and request set attribute and then I want the um, date format error true all right, there we go. So the gender is exactly the same. So for gender, I'm going to just copy the way we done it for the first name. So actually, you know what, you know what, guys, for gender, we it, it's never going to be empty. It's always going to be either male or female. So we don't have to verify it in this simple scenario. But we do need to verify the last name. Huh? So the last name we kind of skipped. So the last name. I'm going to copy paste what we've done for the first name and just change it to last name and uh, empty last name error. Last name error. I'm going to press Control Shift F to format everything. Okay, I think that's enough. We got everything. And the only other thing is let's by default, when we get the form, let's set the errors attribute to be false. So, so if errors do occur, it will be set to true, but by default it's false. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, very well. So let's see how we're doing with time. Okay, I think we have time to run it very quickly and to see the results. So I'm going to remove web six because from the server, and I'm going to now add web seven. This is our current project. Very well. I'm going to now change it to web seven here. Okay, there we go. This is good. Let's submit an empty form and let's see what happens. Okay, we had some syntax error. Uh, okay, there we go. Uh, yeah, that's bad. Okay. It's not bad. I'm just, I just need to look my syn at my syntax a little bit carefully here to see what may have gone wrong. So let's see. Okay. Okay. That's fine. D one to two. I, okay. I think that the space here confused it. Uh, another point is that We, okay, so we had the forward slash here, and then we need another. Okay, sorry guys, there we go. I think this is the correct one now. I apologize about that. Sorry, when I say guys, I mean, I mean both male and female, okay? So there we go, now it worked. Yeah, when I say guys, it just applies equally to both male and female. Uh, okay, so you see we submitted an empty form, first name empty, empty first name error, last name empty, empty last name error, invalidate of birth, gender male. So let's do it again, so slow motion. Uh, I'm going to, let's let's say I'm going to put my first name, but I'm not going to put anything else, and uh, gender. Okay, there we go, we submitted it, but then first name Daniel, last name empty, last name error, invalidate of birth, gender male. And let's now see if we can get, get for example, the date of birth to be okay. So there we go, we submitted. And there we go, first name. So now the only error is the last name. Date of birth is just fine. So there we go, let's now submit it correctly. First name, last name, and gender. Oh, maybe you might as well print the date of birth, but Okay, let's, how are we doing with time? Okay, 
Um, I, okay, so let's, if we get the correct date of birth, let's just system out print lane DLB. There we go. I'm going to click publish to publish this, this thing again. What am I doing? Okay, back. Then add new passenger. Now, hopefully, we, we see every. Oh, there we go. Date, date of birth. We got everything correct. Well, there we go. Uh, thank you for watching this tutorial. And uh, great. So, uh, in the next tutorial, we'll actually, if we find invalid form, we will show the results in the user interface. Okay, so thank you and, uh, and uh, we'll continue next time.